Hello everybody and welcome to part 5 of our Flask tutorial video series. Uh, in this video what we're going to be talking about is uh, kind of adding a few more things, uh, mainly the right navigation bar to this page and this will be kind of the last major use, and major kind of explanation of the bootstrap elements as far as the methodology for you know copying and pasting. Um, I think it's a pretty simple methodology to understand so um, I'll still continue to explain at least the origins of the code and kind of point you to it uh, but this is kind of a slow slow way of going through it so I just now that you hopefully understand how we're doing it uh, you'll be able to mimic it as well so moving right along uh, we've got this so far and we need this kind of right hand navigation bar so if we come here we've got various things like for example if I log out here uh, we can click sign up and that pops up with a little cute thing here we can hit log in that pops up with some login stuff uh, and so on so we kinda wanna mimic that and then obviously we need the video and we're pretty much done of course we still wanna add a footer um, and actually an improved footer from this I've, I've updated my footer so well you'll have the new and improved code soon uh, anyway, uh, let's get started. So we want to add this, and the first of all, it's, a, it's called a nav bar right. Uh, and so, for example, we'll come over to I'm trying to think of which one that I think it'd be in components. We'll do Control F, and we'll, we're looking for nav bar right now. Sure enough, and basically we click and highlight everything. I think it's up to this unordered list. Copy that. And then we'll come over to uh, still within our header, so down here, and paste, and just check. Indeed, that's correct. And let's tab this over left, so shift tab. Oh, that's odd. Okay, never mind. Control. I get. Are my eyes playing? I guess we'll, we just need to bump this one over a little bit. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hold on. I have to fix this. <laughs> oh no, I hit it too many times. Hold on. This is pretty bad. Wow, is it? Uh, okay. It's like the tabs are just too much or something. I don't know. I'm having a really hard time here. We'll just do this. Uh, you guys can feel free to fix that on your own time. Let's save. I don't want to waste anyone's time here. Uh, so we save that, refresh, and here's our bar now. It's uh, a little low. <laughs> low here. Are we not within the same? Uh, let me see here. So, never, never. okay, so with these. We'll leave that here in its own little div tag, but now we're actually, let's make a div around here. So we're gonna say div, uh, and then class equals container-fluid. That's a C, or that's a bootstrap code for a fluid container that kind of moves around. Just You can also use a straight container. It's a little more fixed. And that div tag. And now they're within the same div. So let's save that and hopefully, uh, Still tabbing down, and not quite sure why. Um, let's see. Let me go back up here. Header, header, header. Everything's within the header. Then we've got this div a. That makes sort of sense why that would tab it down, but not enough to cause this problem. And then div container fluid. Oh well, probably. Mm, this is probably our problem actually so let's let's get rid of that real quick let me save that uh, let's try that one more time now yeah that was our problem okay uh, so uh, now we'll zoom in here and we can see that obviously when we zoom it still causes some trouble uh, you'll notice that with bootstrap you'll have stuff like this and then you'll do this and you can kind of like leave it kind of messed up and like this that's kind of annoying um, <laughs> and you are free to try to fix little stuff like that but how many people are coming to your website and doing like this like squishing it and then bringing it back <laughs> like like if you want to fix that go for it uh, not really top priority in my book so I'm not gonna worry too much about that that drop down still does not work but I'll show you in this video how to make that work and in fact um, I can probably show you right now just before we replace that drop down so we come down here outside of the header 
you're going to have things called body tags and this is where the actual body of your stuff goes this is also where the python generated content is tending to go and within that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have some script tags and generally a script tag looks like the following so you've got uh, like this here you'll do this and so here's a script tag it's text slash javascript and then this is the you know path to that and then we'll do the exact same thing again we'll come down here and this is an outsourced code uh, for jQuery and so this is the code that we are housing on our website so it's within the static directory the file name is in this js slash bootstrap dot min dot js uh, and then this is jQuery so we can save this come to our website refresh and the drop down should work uh, it's not working still very aggravating let me see it's kind of confusing why that uh, that that should have done it is there nothing in the drop down nope there's stuff there let's see if we're missing elements bootstrapped yeah well we're seeing yeah so whenever something doesn't work you can always you know hit f12 and that brings up these like little developer tool things and then you can see the error that's coming it says bootstrap requires jquery no problem i understand that good sir we are report or we are importing jquery uh, let us let us bring it in on top instead however let's try to save that so before bootstrap uh, now okay that worked okay so that was our problem it, it just wasn't coming first understandable so now the drop down works anyway uh, moving on uh, we're actually not going to use those drop downs instead we're gonna have a modal here but you could use them I don't think they look bad honestly uh, but we're going to add those modals that I use currently. So we'd have this, and then now we're basically going to gut all that. We just wanted the nav bar, really. And now what we want is to use these modals. So this will probably be the last time I really show you guys uh, anything. But I wanted to show you guys, you know, so we're taking nav bar, right? We want that, but now we want the modal. And the modals are going to be in probably components. Let's type modal. No, I guess, I guess it would be JavaScript. I don't know. Let's try that. Okay, here we are. Right. So here's some code that will give us this button and launch. So this would be the path I would take. I would just copy that code come over here, paste it. Let's, let me zoom out real quick and fix the uh, orientation a bit. Save. Come back to my website. Refresh. Looky there. We'll hit launch demo modal. And sure enough, it, it works. So we're like, yeah, that's cool. We want to use that. So we close. So we know we want it. We don't really want the button, though, but that's OK. We can change that to be anything we want. So for example, what I'm going to do is we'll come over. Um, I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll take, um, I'm trying to think if I want to. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll just leave that there. And then what we can do is we can come over um, to here and I think let's just control F modal it's not really the best let's see navbar right so that's this is that our nap you know UL class navbar right and then we can take that all the way down to I'm trying to see the closing tags for my uh, that's our f uh, thing. all the way down to here here we are okay so you can come to my website, and I would just copy and paste it, um, and I'll, I'll explain the code uh, that's within that we're actually using. But copy that, come over here. There may be some variables, but there, we should be able to get away with this. So unordered list. Let me check one last time. Let's see, unordered list all the way up to unordered list. Yeah. So we're gonna copy this. Come on down. Paste. We'll save real quick and see if we get away with this. Let me refresh. Okay, so there's our buttons. We click login. Sure enough, there's the login. We click sign up. There we go. Let me go. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I assure you no animals were harmed in the making of this video. So uh, apparently there's a, someone had a fire or something outside. There's a fire truck and everything. 
it's probably my house that's actually burning down right now as I'm making the video. Anyway, my dog's trying to alert me. Now, okay, so uh, so this is our website. We copy and pasted the code. I, I just want to explain kind of what what my code is. I, I don't really want to just copy and paste a bunch of stuff and be like, all right, you'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but you should be able to kind of gather from what we're doing here. Um, so this was our original navbar write. So, uh, what's happening here is we've got now a container within it. That container has basically all of the stuff. And this is our modal. I actually apparently left the original ID tag even. So what happens with a modal is first we have a, a link here that's just support and donate. So this is probably the most easy one to understand. So I'll explain that one first. So you have this here and this is just a typical link and then you see we have this addition of spam and then this glyph icon and then support and then these weird symbols uh, and what it's doing is we're linking to the support page so that's here we click on that and it'll send us to the support page then we have span and what this does is just generates that glyph icon then we come over here to support and that's just the text of the button basically and then these these things all these are like spaces so a lot of times you can add your own space but it only will like one space is one space you can't just like space 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 it will treat just a bunch of spaces like one space but you can use these and it'll be many spaces also I add a, a, a space here because without it I don't know it's just too close to the glyph icon so I'll just show you really quick I just I feel like it's too close I want a space so anyway I have the space so that's a basic link now we're going to incorporate the link with a glyph I, or a, a link that will call upon a modal. So here we have a, a, a link that calls upon this modal here. And so here let's just address this. A role presentation, don't really need to worry too much about that. Class active. Uh, we don't actually even need. I'm not sure that's actually even necessary, honestly. Uh, let's just refresh real quick. I don't I don't really see that there's any need for that. Ooh, these underlines are ugly too. We'll get rid of those. I'm super, I don't understand how they're there on Anyway, we'll we'll get rid of those. Uh you can add a pretty simple uh code to get rid of those. Well, I guess we'll add that in the next one. I just want to explain this code real quick. Uh so anyways, uh this links to that modal. The data target, data toggle needs to be modal. Data target is, you know, the pound sign and then whatever the name or the ID of that modal is. So you can even see, I highlight this and, it, and it's exact same as this one. And that's how this modal will know when I click on this, the data target is that modal, which just so happens this is that thing that has that ID. What is that thing that has that ID? It's a modal fade, which is bootstrap code. Awesome. And whatever's in within this div tag is what will load and that's basically it I mean so what's in this div tag is some modal dialog content header this is all stuff that is within um, JavaScript here so you can just see that these are basically all the stuff and you can click on that this is text in a modal the modal title is something that goes up here before this divider you can put buttons in here a bunch of text they came with some buttons. I don't really use them. I don't really see the point of having the Xbox and a close, but whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, all that. So it's all just basically bootstrap code uh, that we've copy and pasted, honestly. The only thing that might be somewhat confusing is the forms here, it's including this form. Uh, this is a form that we're actually going to use that is generated by Flask. So right now, it's going to have to be one of those things that I'm going to have to explain kind of more in detail later, uh, but it will be explained. So it's a form that is basically kind of checked by Python. So when someone fills out a form, you need to make sure the form one is kind of secure. You need to take that data, pass that data, uh, and store it, and it needs to be all done in Python code, but in a very fancy and secure way. Also, when you have, like, say, a registration form, uh, let's come to our website for example uh, and say somebody comes here and they click on sign up you need to make sure the username needs to be a username that doesn't exist the email address kinda needs to be a legit email address password and password need to match each other 
they need to have accepted the terms of service and then they are allowed to register but only when all of those chips and all of those stars align can somebody register so obviously that's important <laughs> so the sign up registration form is kind of a, a unique form uh, so anyways, uh, that's that. Hopefully you understand everything up to this point. I tried to pick up the pace a little bit and we'll continue kind of picking up the pace with HTML and stuff. So, uh, if you do have any questions though, please don't feel stupid or silly asking for help. I'm, I'm always happy to help. I'm sure other people will be happy to help if you're confused about something. Check out the documentation for Bootstrap. A lot of good stuff to learn there. Uh, and I, I think that's it. So again, if you have questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until the next video.